Welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today we're going to be drawing some silly sea life. Before we begin, you're going to need to gather five items for our art project. Simple things, you probably already have them in your house. You're going to need a pencil, an eraser. You could also use the one on the end of your pencil. Something for outlining. My favorite is a Sharpie marker, but if you don't have that, a black colored pencil will also work. You're going to need something for coloring. I'm going to be using crayons. And the last item you're going to need is a piece of paper. Now, I use the paper that comes out of my printer. However, you could also use some white construction paper if you have that. Now, if you are going to be using paper that comes out of your printer, I'm going to ask you to gather a couple extra sheets because you can see that the ink leaks through the paper, and I don't want it to get on your desk. So get a couple extra sheets, and that way, if it does leak through, it's just going to go on to the paper behind. All right, pause the video, gather those items up, and then meet me back here. Welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today, we're going to be making some silly sea life. Now, before we begin, I am going to just remind you of a couple items you're going to need to get started. So the first thing we're going to need is some paper. Now, I'm going to be using just the paper that comes out of my printer. I'm going to be asking you to gather more than one sheet this time because we're going to be using a marker for outlining. And as you can see, the marker bleeds through to the back of the paper. So make sure you have a couple extra pieces of paper underneath just to kind of protect your work surface. Next, you're going to need a pencil. You're also going to need an eraser. You could always use the eraser on the end of your pencil. You're going to need something for outlining. I like to use a Sharpie marker. You could also use a black colored pencil if you don't have a Sharpie marker. And the last thing you're going to need is some crayons for coloring. You could also use colored pencils or markers if you have those. I will be using crayons today. Now, before we begin, I'm going to show you the way I store my crayons. I put my crayons in a coffee cup like this or a, a shallow glass something that's not too tall, and that way it's easy for me to reach in and grab the color I need. All right, let's get ready to start. Um, I'm going to have you pause the video, gather up those items that you need, and then meet me back here when you are ready. All right, let's begin. So I'm going to first make sure that I've got a pencil and an eraser. We won't be needing my marker for a while, so I'm going to move that off to the side. And the first thing I'm going to do is find the center of my paper. And that's important. When I am drawing, I always like to find the very center of my paper with my finger. And then I'm going to take my finger and make a little dot with my pencil right in the center. And this is going to help me be able to position all of my little sea creatures so that they have a lot of space and that they don't get too large or too small for my paper. So my center is here. The first picture is of this beautiful, fun, silly shark that we're going to draw. And when I am designing a lesson, I always look at something and try to find the shape before I draw it. For instance, you can tell what this is going to start out with, a circle. You can tell that my crab is going to be a football shape or an oval. And you can tell by the shape of my shark that I'm just going to be making a curve like a backward C. All right, let's get our paper ready. We've got our pencil. We're going to be moving over to this side of the paper. And then you might want to practice with your finger how big you want to make that curve for your shark. Once you figure it out, you're going to take your pencil and you're very lightly going to draw a backward C. Now try to draw this nice and light. Don't draw too dark. I'm going to be drawing a little darker than you are because I want you to be able to see my line on the camera here. So hopefully you can see that line. There's my backward C. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to be changing it in just a minute. The next thing I'm going to be doing is making a rounded loop here in the front for the front of our shark face. So I'm just going to loop it around like this. And we want to make the shark a little bit wider at the front and skinny at the bottom. It's kind of like a banana shape if you look at the shape, right? So he's wide here and skinny at the end. So I'm just going to round it around like a banana. 
and then I'm going to bring it down to a point down here. All right, now, as I am drawing, I'm going to end up with a couple extra lines, things that I don't like. So anytime that happens and you find a line that you don't care for, you can always pause the video and erase and then turn it back on whenever you're ready. All right, so once we have this shape, now we're going to extend our shark's nose just a little bit. So I'm going to bring the line out like this just a little bit and then loop it around and bring it back. See how I did that? I just curved it around and brought it back. So the first most important part of our shark is to give him a giant eye right up here. So I'm gonna give him a big circle eye up here. You want to make it pretty big because remember we're going to be tracing over everything with a marker and I want you to look at how thick the tip of the marker is. So you want to be making sure that you're drawing large. All right now to make our shark look angry we're going to make a diagonal line right here. So I'm going to bring my pencil down on an angle like this. Even though I haven't drawn the eyeball yet, you can tell that it's going to be an angry face just by slanting this line down. And then I'm going to give him a large oval pupil right here in the front. Now, don't bother coloring it in right now. We're going to do that later with our marker. But what you can do is put just a little hint of pencil at the bottom of that pupil. I leave a little white space up at the top, but don't color it hard. But that's just to remind you later where you're going to be putting your black marker. Now we're going to get ready to do our shark's mouth. So right here at this little curve of his nose, I'm going to bring a line that goes up, kind of like he's smiling, past his eye, loop it around, and then bring it back. Now you'll notice I don't bring it back to here. I kind of tuck it underneath. So this upper lip is up underneath his bottom lip. I'm going to put my pencil down. I'm going to pick up my eraser. If you don't have a, a separate eraser, just use the eraser on the end of your pencil. And I'm going to erase this part of his face. We don't need this part in the front anymore. And I'm going to add a little bend in his nose right there. Let's give him a little nostril right here, too. Just going to give him a little curved nostril. And then right here, underneath this part of his mouth, I'm going to erase this little section right here. We don't need that little piece anymore because we kind of put his bottom lip right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to give him a little bump. So this bottom lip right there, and then this part's going to become his chin. So I want you to look and see what I just did. I erased this line that used to be here. I gave him a little bump for his lip, and then this is going to be his chin. Now let's get ready to give him a big fang right here. We're going to give him a big, sharp tooth right here in the front. So I just made a big wide letter V. Now make sure you make these things pretty big. Because remember, once again, we have to draw everything with this thick marker later. So you want to always be drawing a little bit larger than your pencil. Your pencil point is going to draw a little line. And we're going to be drawing a little bit bigger so that we can use our marker later. Let's give him a couple more teeth behind this big one in the front. On the bottom, we're going to give him some teeth coming up right in that space. So I'm going to go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. All right, now we're going to go right here on the back of his head, and this is where we're going to turn him into a shark. We're going to give him his large dorsal fin, that little 
fin that pops up out of the water. So you'll see it's going to be a curved line that comes back and then comes back down, leading a wide space here and a narrow space up at the tip. So right here behind its head, I'm going to curve a line that comes back. And then it's going to loop around and come back to his body. You see how it kind of curves away from his head and back again. All right, now the next part of our shark is down here at the bottom. We're going to give him a tail at the bottom. Now, if you made your shark too long and you don't have room for the tail, here's a couple ideas. You could make his tail going completely off the edge of the paper. So if you look at my picture here, I kind of curved him up a little higher. So I have room for his tail, but maybe you brought it all the way down to the end of the paper. So you could have his tail coming off the edge of the paper. See how it's kind of going off the edge of the paper? So you could do that. Or you could erase. And just shorten his body a little bit. Either way. So I make his tail. I'm going to draw one line that curves out this direction. I'm going to go one line that curves out the other direction, making kind of a rainbow shape here. And at the end, I'm going to just connect them in the center like this, up and down. Now you can see my tail is going to go a little bit off the edge of the paper. Now the next part of our shark is we're going to do a division line that goes from his nose, curves around his body, all the way down to the tip right here before his tail starts. So that we have one part of the shark to be colored and the other part will keep white. So I'm going to start right here, kind of where uh, the front of his nose is. And very lightly, I'm just going to go up. I'm just basically kind of tracing the same curve right through his body. Up, around, and all the way down to the point. Later, when we color, we'll keep this part white for his belly, and this part will color with grays and blues. All right, he's going to need a farm fin right here. So I'm going to draw a curve, like a rainbow shape. And I'm going to bring it around and down, and around and down. Now, once I do that, I'm going to erase that line in the middle of his fin. And then I'm going to give him an extra arm fin behind his body. So over here, I'm going to do the same thing around and down and around and down. Once I've drawn the two fins here, then we're done drawing our little shark. We're going to move over to this space over here on our picture and we're going to get ready to draw our tougher fish. So, um, this style fish is actually a very skinny fish when he's swimming, but when he is startled or frightened or trying to protect himself, he swallows in big, huge gulps of air and he literally can blow up like this, filled with water like a big balloon and he could actually float on the surface of the water. There is one type of puffer fish it's called a porcupine puffer fish and he has sharp spikes that actually stick out of his body. So let's get ready to draw a puffer fish. So first off, let's look at the shape. What shape are we going to be drawing first? A circle. Now I don't want you to worry about making a perfectly round circle because we're going to be adding some spines to him later. So over here in this section, somewhere over here, we're going to draw a medium-sized circle. Now if we were actually in the ocean and we saw a pufferfish compared to a shark, a pufferfish would be much smaller than a shark. 
However, since we're working with our chubby marker today, it would be very hard to draw a small puffer fish. So we're just gonna exaggerate our shape of our puffer fish today. Now the next thing we're going to do is over here toward the right side of circle, we're gonna make two enormous large circles for eyes. Now you can make your eyes touching close together like this, or you can make them separate. It's up to you. You can separate them or bring them close together. And we want our puffer fish to look surprised. So what we're going to do is float the pupils right in the middle of the eye like this. And then I'm gonna take my pencil and very lightly color just the lower part of the pupil. Now when we're surprised, our eyebrows lift up kind of like this, in this angle, almost like they're forming a teepee. So what we want to do is draw one eyebrow tilting up like this and the other eyebrow tilting up like that. He already looks a little worried, doesn't he? Now we want to give the illusion of him being swelled up and holding his breath. So the way that we're going to do that is by puffing up his cheeks. So the first thing we're going to do is add some big chubby cheeks on him. And then we're going to give him a very short little mouth. And that's going to kind of give the illusion that he's holding his breath. Well, the first thing I think we should do is let's kind of swell up his cheeks right under his eyes. So just kind of curving the line right there. And then let's kind of bulge out his cheek right here. Like he's holding a big gulp of air. And then somewhere over here on this side of the face, we're gonna match that line on this side, doing the same thing. And then underneath his mouth here, I want you just to make a very short little line. And I kind of want it to be frowning slightly. And then to give him that illusion that he's got big puffy cheeks, we're going to give him a short line here. And a short line on this side as well. Now for the next part of our little puffer fish, we're going to give him some arm fins. So I'm going to draw one line turning up. And then another line tilting out. And then just gonna feather the edge. I'm gonna match that on this side. So I'm gonna somewhere over here on this side of his eye. I'm gonna do one line coming up and one line coming down and feather the edge. I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm going to erase the line inside in right here. I'm also going to erase this line right here on the side of his cheek. And our next part of our picture is to start to add the spikes or the spine. So I'm going to make a triangle upside down, kind of upside down V shape. I'm going to skip a little space and make another one. Skip a space and make another one. Skip a space. And I'm going to just continue going around the circle that we drew earlier and giving him these little spikes. I want to make them kind of fat and chubby so I'm able to go over them with my marker later. And then just give him a few random ones on the edge of his face. Now lastly, he needs a little tail behind him. So somewhere either up here or over here behind his arm fin, you're just gonna draw a matching little tail that matches the arm. It's just a little bit wider. Now inside the fin, you can just add a couple little quick lines like this. And you can do a few on the back tail. Now our puffer fish is done. Now to kind of give the illusion that he's holding his breath, I'm gonna have you draw a few bubbles. Now don't draw them too small because remember, we've gotta go over them with our chubby marker later. So I'm just gonna put a couple bubbles floating up above him. And you could also do a few movement lines. So I'm just gonna draw two commas side by side in a couple spaces around him. I'm going to add a little movement line around the tail of my shark. 
and maybe one behind him as well. Now we have one more little sea creature to create, and that's going to be our little crab. So for our crab, you could make a circle shape or you could make an oval or football shape. So I'm going to be making kind of more of a football shape for mine, but you could also do it as a circle. So I'm just going to go somewhere down here and I'm going to draw kind of a round curve with a football. And then I'm going to match it underneath with a smile. Now it looks like I just drew a lemon. I'm going to give my crab very large eyes, just like what we did up there to match. Now your crab could be really looking lots of different ways. Let me erase the inside of the crab's eyes. So for instance, you could have a silly crab. Maybe he's looking kind of goofy like this. Got one eye looking up, one eye looking down, or maybe he's looking up at the shark. I want you to decide what you want your crab to be looking at. He could also be looking up at the pufferfish. He could be looking off to the side. You could add some more sea creatures later when we're done. So I'm going to be having my crab looking up at the shark. And it has his eyebrows kind of floating up in the air. And I'm going to be making my crab not smiling because I want him to kind of look like he's a little worried. So I'm going to be starting kind of with a little frown like this. See how I made this frown lightly, but then I'm going to wobble it to make it look even a little bit more worried. So I just kind of made it a little bit more of a wavy line, but you could just do a straight frown if you want to. You could also make him smiling. Now the next part of our crab is to give him some little legs over here to the side. So right here, right kind of where the point of your little oval shape is, I'm going to just make a curved line that comes down. It's going to look like a little finger. I'm going to loop it around and bring it back. And I'm going to do this two more times. So there's three little legs on this side. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to make one more line across the bottom right here, kind of where his chin would be separate from the bottom of his body. And I think I'm gonna give him a couple little spots on his body. All right, let's get ready to make him look like a crab. So the first thing I'm gonna do is roll on the the right side right here, I'm going to curve a line that goes up and around. And I'm going to match it on the left side. So I'm going to come right here and curve it around. And then I'm going to do a second line parallel to it, just matching. Parallel just means that it's another line right next to it and they don't touch. And then I'm going to add his claws. So to draw his claws, I start out with the letter U. Now you can make his claws really large if you'd like to. And then I just make the letter V inside of this. So I go down, 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 down. And don't worry if one claw ends up being larger than the other, because if you've actually ever seen crabs before, a lot of times there are certain crabs that do have one claw much larger than the other. One is their dominant claw. All right, so now I've got my crab, I have my fish, I have my shark. The last thing I'm going to add is a little bit of sand at the bottom of our little sea scene. So I'm just gonna come over here off to the side. You could start way up here if you wanted to and bring it down this way, but I'm going to put mine right about here and I'm just going to bring it down. It's going to come behind my crab through his foot, off, and then when I bring it off to the side over here, I'm going to kind of loop it up a little higher. Now the reason I'm going to do that is now I have a little space, a little hill over here 
where I could add some seaweed. That way we can add another color in there. So I'm gonna make a little bump. And to draw seaweed, I'm just going to draw a wavy line like this. It goes up, comes around, and then loops back down again. And then I'm gonna erase that one little line inside. And I'm gonna add a line that kind of goes up like this. So that's one blade of grass or seaweed. I'm gonna add another one. Gonna erase the line of sand inside. And if you wanna add another one, you can. When you're all finished drawing your seaweed, if you would like to add a little cluster of seaweed somewhere else, you can. I'm going to add a little bump right here, kind of by where his feet are. And I'm going to add a little bit of seaweed off to the side here, kind of moving in the current of the ocean. All right. Once you are done with your pencil line, now you're gonna go in with your eraser before we start inking or using our colored pencil and everything. And you're gonna get rid of any pencil lines that you don't wanna use or keep anymore. So I'm just gonna go very carefully in with my eraser and start to erase those pencil lines. So what I'm doing right now is I am taking my eraser and if you notice, I'm holding my hand flat and I'm erasing in this little space right here of my hand. Now, if you're right-handed, you'd be holding your eraser in your right hand and you'll be putting your left hand down like this and erasing in that little gap. Now, I call this the duck's mouth, this little space right here. This was a duck and it was saying quack. If you keep your eraser only inside the duck's mouth, what happens is your paper is going to stay flat. I'm going to remove these background papers for just a minute to show you what I mean. So if I'm erasing right here in this little spot, and I can erase pretty hard with my eraser and my paper does not move. But look what happens if I erase outside of the duck's mouth. You notice how my paper can move, it can shift. And that's how I get wrinkles in my paper. So it's really a great little trick for keeping your paper smooth is to put your hand like this and erase just right here in the duck's mouth. And make sure when you're brushing all those crumbs off your paper that there are no crumbs underneath your paper because we're gonna be using our crayons in a minute and we don't wanna have a bunch of little particles of eraser underneath our paper because it leaves marks when we use our crayons. Now, once you're done with all of your erasing, then you're gonna go ahead and put your eraser off to the side. You're gonna move your pencil off to the side. Now we're gonna get ready to outline. So I had recommended using a marker. I use Sharpie markers. However, if you don't have a Sharpie marker, you could also use a black colored pencil. The reason I like Sharpie markers is because they're a permanent ink and so they don't smear when we go over them later with um, paint or with even our eraser, they don't smear or smudge. So the first trick is to make sure you don't have one paper, but extra papers underneath. I'm gonna show you the back of my artwork. You can see that my marker leaks right through the back of the paper. So if you were on top of your desk and there were some important papers there, you would not wanna be drawing because look what happens if you're working with your marker on top of your desk, and you're inking your lines. Sometimes it can leak through and get onto your desk. And this would not be good if you have important papers there. So you want to make sure that you have some extra papers underneath just to absorb that ink. So here's my extra papers. You can see it already has marks on it from the last time I was drawing. So I just come stack them up like this. I place them on my desk. And we're going to start to ink. Now, the first little trick with inking with a Sharpie marker is the quicker that you draw, the cleaner your line is going to be. The faster that you draw with your hand, try not to move slow. 
And also try not to push very hard with your marker. Now what's gonna happen is you're tracing is you're probably gonna end up not being exactly on your pencil line. I'm never on my pencil line. I always seem to slip off my pencil line as I'm tracing, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna erase all those pencil lines later when we're done inking everything. So now what I'm gonna have you do is you're just gonna go around and start inking all over your pencil line. You don't have to be inking at the same place where I am. And when everything is done being inked, then we're going to work on our coloring. So I'm going to be working on my shark right now, but maybe you're working on your crab or on your puffer fish. As you are working, remember to try to move as quickly as you can with your pen. And when you're doing those teeth, you want those lines to be nice and sharp. So there's the sharp point at the end of each one of those teeth. Now, if you are working on the shark, I don't want you to actually color in between the teeth right now with your marker. We'll do that later when we use our crayons. For the shark's eye, I want you to watch how I do his pupil. I'm going to trace around the black dot, the pupil of his eye, and I'm going to only color a little bit at the bottom. I'm going to leave a little white twinkle highlight right there at the tip of his eye. Now sometimes when you're using a marker, you might end up filling that space in and you'll lose that highlight. And don't worry about that. If that happens, it's absolutely fine. I'm going to not forget his little nostril and then I'm going to work on his tail. Remember my tail ended up going off the edge of the paper. Yours might not have gone off the edge of the paper. And then I had a couple little motion lines that I tr traced around him. So I'm going to uh, have you continue working on inking the rest of your picture. I'm going to pause the recording and let you finish that. And then I'm going to meet you back here once you're done. So once you're done inking everything, turn the recording back on again. All right. So if you have finished inking everything, then we're going to go in now and get our eraser and erase our pencil lines. Any lines that you weren't able to go over with your markers. I'm just going to very lightly go in and erase those pencil lines. Most of them are going to be completely covered up by our crayon anyway. But if there's any that are kind of a little bit too dark or heavy that you don't think the crayon is going to cover up, go ahead and erase those, especially those that are in his white eye. And I'm going to make sure all of my crumbs are very carefully brushed off my desk, all the way off the desk. We don't want to have any crumbs underneath our paper. We'll be using our crayons now for coloring. So you can see I had a lot of leftover ink underneath my picture when I was coloring earlier. All right, let's get ready now to start our coloring. So I want you to look at my drawing and the way that I colored my picture. So um, I was trying to figure out what color to make my shark. So some of the colors that I chose were gray and I also used black. And then the other color you'll notice is I added some blue. So I thought it would look really nice to add a little bit of blue. So I tried a couple different shades of blue in with my gray and black. Now, if you just want to make a gray shark, that would be fine. So the first thing we're going to do is take uh, our gray crayon. If you don't have gray, by the way, you could use black and just color very softly. So this is what it's going to look like if you're using a gray crayon around the edge. But if you don't have gray, you can take black and color very softly with it. So look, this is with my black crayon. And you can't really tell the difference between the black and the gray because I'm coloring very lightly with it. So if you don't have gray, just go ahead and color with black and just color lightly. So the first thing I'm going to do with my gray crayon 
is I'm just going to go around the outside edge of the shark. Even here, because this is going to be the white side of his belly, but I'm going to put a little shadow around the edge. I'm just running my crayon around the entire edge of my shark. And down the center line also. It's kind of like we're going to be outlining him first and then coloring him in later. Now the fin is all going to be a solid color. It's not going to be split in half. So I'm going to outline the whole fin and the fin on this side. I'm going to outline his tail. And that most important dorsal fin up here at the top. And don't forget his eyelid up here. This is a part of his skin as well. So once I've outlined all of that area, I'm going to put a little gray right here underneath his nostril because that would be a shadow. And now I'm going to take my gray, and I'm only going to be coloring gray on the upper portion, not this lower portion. I'm going to keep that white. So I'm going to start by first coloring here. And when you're coloring, I don't want you to color really, really hard. You're just going to very softly go in with your gray or your black if you don't have gray. Fill in his eyelid up above, keeping his eye white. Then I'm going to come around here. If you notice when I'm coloring, I'm kind of following the way that his body is shaped. So he's curved. So I'm going to be coloring, curving my crayon. And I'm not coloring really hard. I'm going to be layering colors on top of one another. Then I'm going to color his fin. And his other fin. And by the way, if I am going too fast for you, isn't that the beauty of using our online learning? You can pause the video and you can catch up and then push play when you're ready. I'm going to color his tail fin. So that's our color number one. Now, once you're done with your gray, now we can go in and color with some black. This time, when we're using our black, we don't want to do it very dark. So if you didn't have gray the last time and you only have black, this time you're going to do the black a little heavier, a little harder around the edge. So I'm going to press a little bit harder around the edge. Not pushing super hard, but just a little heavier around the edge. Once again, it's kind of like we're outlining him. We're adding a little bit of shadow to the sides. Here on the fin. His eyelid. Front of his nose. Nostril. And then right down this center line. All right, now once we've done that outline, what we're gonna do is very lightly go in and cover up the gray with a light coat of black. We're not coloring hard, just a nice soft light touch where he's kind of lightly scribbling a little bit of black over the gray. So that's layer number two of our colors. Don't forget his fins and his tail. And while you have this black in your hand, we're going to very carefully go in and color in between his top teeth and his bottom teeth. Now take your time. In here, you kind of have to go in between those little small areas. So take your time on this. 
and that makes his teeth show up a little brighter. All right, once you're done with the black, we're gonna put the black away. And now you're gonna choose, if you would like to, you can add a layer of blue on top. So lots of different shades of blue. You choose the one that you like. And I'm just gonna brush a little bit of blue over the gray and the black. I'm not pushing very hard. I don't want him to be a blue shark, but I'm just adding a little bit of a color over the gray so the gray doesn't look so flat. Now, once you're done with your shark, you're gonna do the same trick when we do our crab and when we do our puffer fish. We're gonna layer colors together. Don't forget your tail. And if you would like to, you can go in and put a tiny hint of the blue around the edge of the white. I'm not putting a heavy coat. I'm just very lightly brushing a little hint of blue right around the edge of the white. Kind of works like a shadow. Okay. Time to move on to our next little critter. Let's go over here to our puffer fish. And we're going to work with some warm colors. Kind of reminds me of colors of the sun. So I'm gonna use some yellow. I'm gonna use an orange of some sort. What else do I have in my crayon box here? That's a warm color. Red is a warm color, so we'll find a red. You could also use red orange. You could even use hot pink. All of those colors would look fabulous. So I'm going to start with yellow first. My lightest of all my colors I want to use. And I'm just going to scribble some yellow all around the shark. I mean, I'm sorry, not the shark, the puffer fish, except for his eyes. I want to keep those white. And then, once you're done with the yellow, we're going to do kind of like what we did with our shark, where we're going to outline with a darker color. Now, I didn't bother outlining with the yellow because it's such a light color. The other colors are going to end up being a better color for outlining. So I'm just kind of using my yellow as my base coat. And since my yellow is so light, I'm coloring a little bit with firmer pressure. Not so hard that I break my crayon. But I do break crayons, so don't worry if you break a crayon, it's okay. We can use broken crayons too. And then I'm gonna move on to an orange. So I think I'm gonna start with this lighter shade of orange and I'm gonna outline around the edges. So up and around each one of those little uh, pointy spines, around the edge of the fins, And I'm even going to trace around the outside of his eyes. Then I'm going to put a layer of orange very lightly over the yellow. It's going to make a pretty cold and yellow color. I'm not coloring hard. You can see I'm very gently scribbling. I'm not pushing hard. Just adding a layer of orange over the yellow. When I'm done with my orange, I'm going to move on to a little bit darker. I've got kind of this uh, red orange color. That's nice. I'm going to do the same thing, the same little trick we did before, just going around the edges. The outline. I'm going to brush a little bit under here under his chin. And now I'm going to put a little bit of red orange right here in the middle. So that this part of his cheeks kind of look like they're sticking out. If I make it a little bit darker right here in the middle, this part's going to look like it's puffing out. So 
when I'm done with that color, I'm going to move on to red. Tracing around the edges. It's not really going to look red. It's going to be more of a warm orange, like a dark orange, because we have that pretty yellow base coat. And then if you want to, at the end, you can pop in a little bit of pink. Let me put a little pink in his cheeks. Now, if you wanted to make your puffer fish a girl, you could go back in with your marker and add some eyelashes. All right, puffer fish is done. Moving now down to our crab. So when I picture crabs, I think they are also warm colors, kind of reddish orange. But I think what I'm going to do for my crabs <laughs> to make them look a little bit different is I might add a little brown also, just to make him look slightly different than my puffer fish. Now, you don't have to do this. You could outline your crab and make him purple if you wanted to. Or blue. So I'm going to outline him in brown. He's not going to stay brown for long because I'm going to be running some other colors over the brown. Just kind of outlining. So once I'm done with my brown, I can go in uh, with orange, I could go in with yellow, I could go in with a peach. I'm gonna go in with my orange. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm pushing a little harder, but trying not to break my crayon, but I want his colors a little brighter. One trick when you're coloring is to try to keep your crayons going as best you can in one direction. So if you're doing a big area, kind of keeping your hand going in the same direction and not switching it up and going up and down and then side to side and then zigzag. Because all of those lines will end up showing. If you're trying to do a big space, it's a little easier to try to go one direction. When you get into these little tiny spaces, then you can go any direction you, you can to get into those small spaces. But if I'm covering a big area, I try to keep my crayons going in the same direction. All right, I'm done with my orange. Now I'm gonna move on to red. Here's my red crayon, and I'm just gonna go in and add a little red. And the red is gonna warm up that brown. So you can see it's really gonna pop now. I'm rubbing some red over the brown. And I'm going to make him a little darker on this bottom part here. So I'm going to press a little harder with my crayon here. And around his eyes. And then just a white coat of red on the top part of the shell. So as you can tell, he doesn't look red, but his color is different than the puffer fish because I didn't use yellow. I used no yellow, and so he still has the same warm colors, but he looks a little different. When you're all finished with that, then you're gonna move on to coloring your sand and your seaweed. So moving on to those colors, I'm gonna leave that up to you. What color do you wanna do your sand? You could use a peach color or an apricot. You could use brown. Let me show you what I used on mine. I used brown, I used a little peach. You can see I also used yellow. I think I even tried a little of this golden yellow. I had two different kinds of yellow in my crayon box, so I just kind of played around with all of them. You can see from my seaweed that I experimented and used two different colors of green in my seaweed. So in your sand, you can start 
by outlining with one of your darker colors. So I'm going to be using my brown to outline where the edge of my sand is. I made a little bumpy hill right here. So I'm going to outline that. You could also outline it a little heavier underneath your crab, like a shadow. So Oh, it might be kind of fun. So I'm going to scribble a little bit of brown underneath my crab here. It's going to actually look like a shadow. And maybe a little brown right here, like there's a shadow, because the shark would be casting a shadow on the sand down below. Then I'm going to scribble very softly some brown. And I'm going to do my crayon side to side like this. This is horizontal. I'm not coloring hard, I'm just quickly scribbling in. It's okay if you get some in the seaweed. Then I'm gonna put my brown back in my coffee cup and I'm gonna grab another color. So I could go into peach if I had, you know, peach, if you don't have peach, yellow or golden yellow would be fine. Here's yellow, looks gorgeous. That one's the golden yellow. Here's the regular yellow. That looks beautiful too. You could mix the two together. Kind of play with this and have fun. Uh, the peach is a really good color for sand too. You can see the peach up here. I'll show you what that looks like without the yellow. So that's with peach. But of course, I'm going to mix all those colors together. Why not? That's the best part. There's really no wrong way to do art. Just have fun with it. I'm going to add a little yellow up here to match the yellow down below. Just kind of scribbling it around. All right, when we get ready to do the seaweed, the seaweed is going to have some shades of green in it. So I like to start with yellow first. So look in your crayon box, see if you have any different shades of green. You might have two. You could also use a pretty turquoise. If you have a turquoise, that would be beautiful. Seaweed comes in all different colors. You don't have to do green seaweed. You could make uh, maroon or burgundy seaweed, which is like a dark, dark red. You could make purple seaweed. You could make brown seaweed. It's does not have to be green. So I'm scribbling some yellow first. I like to put some yellow in first. Then I'm going to layer in some light green. And you'll notice my light green barely shows up. Not very dark. See how it hardly shows up? But that's okay because I'm going to now go over with the darker green. So when I take that darker green and I press around the sides. Remember how we outlined it before? So I'm going to outline my seaweed using this little bit darker green and it makes the middle of that little leaf of seaweed really show up almost like the sunlight's hitting it. Now once your seaweed is done, the last thing we're going to do, we've got some bubbles up here that we can make a blue. So choose a blue that you like. You can color the whole bubble in, or you could just color around the edge like this and leave a little light at the top of it. Now for our final part, I'm going to show you a trick that I do for coloring big areas of background. So if I'm going to do a sky or an ocean, I like to look for my old crayons that are broken. I told you I always save my broken crayons. I usually keep it in a big Ziploc bag or in an old shoe box. So here is an old blue crayon that's broken. Now, if your parents just bought you a new box of crayons, I do not want you breaking the crayon on purpose and peeling the wrapper off. So don't do that. But if you have some old crayons laying around and you've got a blue one, then let me show you how I do this. So I make sure I have another piece of paper underneath me that's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to remove this purple paper for a minute so you can see the white paper underneath. And you want your paper to be a little bit bigger than what you're working on. 
and you're going to set your crayon on its side like this and I'm going to hold my paper with one hand and I'm just going to very softly drag the side of my crayon across my paper. Now you're going to have to do it a little differently when you get into some of these tight areas but or it's big, you can just kind of use the side of your crayon before I break the crayon to get into those spaces. And then I'm going to use kind of the tip when I get into some of these smaller areas. And you'll notice if I can't get my crayon by the side in there, I can just use the tip of it, but color very softly. So once you put one coat, you can go right over your seaweed. because you're using blue and blue is a part of the color. Now remember I told you to make sure you clean your paper. Do you see that little guy right there? Look at this, that is my eraser crumb. Now check out that little crumb right there. Do you see it? I can move it with my finger. Now watch what happens. Remember I said to make sure you clean your area. Do you see that little worm picture, little line right there on my background? That's because that little guy got in the way. So I'm gonna move him right now. I'm gonna place him up here and I'm gonna start to color you see how he just showed up right there? Do you see that? So that is why I asked you to try to clean your surface before you start to use the side of your crayon. I'm gonna brush it off a little cleaner so I don't have these little worms floating around in the ocean. It's okay if I do, but... And then the other thing that's kind of fun is you can take your crayon and rub it just a little bit harder around the edge. So you notice I'm going like this just a little harder around the edge. And it looks really beautiful. This way you could also add another shade of blue or maybe even a little turquoise or green over this to make your ocean a different shade. So right now it's just plain old blue, but I could go in now, I could pop in another color. Now I'm gonna show you how to uh, color with your crayons if you don't have a broken crayon. So I'm gonna go in with some purple now. And I'm gonna color the purple up around the edges. Now, first thing, I'm gonna hold my crayon on its side like this. So I'm gonna be using just the edge of this crayon very softly. And I'm just gonna very softly go around it like this. I'm not coloring hard. I'm gonna put a little purple. Purple's a really pretty color to work with too for the ocean. Green would be beautiful too. And I'm just very softly coloring around the edge. So what I do is if I'm using a darker color like purple or green or turquoise, then I go back over it with that blue one more time and it blends those colors really nicely later. So I'm just gonna go back over that purple a little bit with my blue. You see how that makes kind of a different effect compared to this side where I just use one color? Let me show you what it looks like with turquoise. So turquoise is another beautiful color that you could do this with. I'm just gonna color a little turquoise in there. Turquoise is just a mixture of blue and green. So since I don't have a broken crayon, I'm just using the side of my crayon and coloring very lightly, just around the edge. I'm going to go back in with my blue and rub my blue over it. So this is going to look a little different on this side of the ocean because I use a little bit of turquoise with my blue. All right. Well, I hope you had fun doing our art project today. I had so much fun creating our silly sea life with you. If you would like to send me a picture of your drawing, you can email me at r. Torres at lcusd.net. Snap a picture of your artwork and send it to me. I would love to see what you're working on. And I hope you had fun and I can't wait to do another lesson with you next lesson.